Today's episode is brought to you by Natural Order. It's not that I don't like Birds of Paradise, it's just that I like World Spine Worm more. Commander 2017 is here. A lot of... Uh, interesting cards are in this new Commander product. Which card should you consider for your cube? Find out the top 5 Commander 2017 cube cards in today's episode of Playing With Power. Hello and welcome to Playing With Power, where we talk about the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Today we are going to look at the top 5 Commander 2017 cards for consideration in your queue. First, this episode is not a top 10. The reason for this is that this set left a lot to be desired. Translated, this set wasn't very good. As a quick note, we will only be looking at the newly printed cards in this set. No reprints will be considered for this top 5. If you want to look at my full card selection criteria, please see my other video where I go into more detail on how I make my top 10 selections. Without further ado, let's dive into our top 5. Number 5 on the list is Stalking Leonin. It's 2 and a white for a 3-3 Cat Archer, and when Stalking Leonin enters the battlefield, secretly choose an opponent. Reveal the player you chose as its activated ability. Exile target creature that's attacking you if it's controlled by the chosen player. Activate this ability only once. So this card is what we like to call a rattlesnake. It sits on your side of the battlefield just waiting to strike. What makes this good is that your opponent has to work around this particular card. They can't swing all out with their most powerful creature because they know you're just going to exile it. This allows you to get ahead of the game and forces them to deal with this threat. And it has the great power and toughness for its mana cost. As far as downsides go, activating this ability only once is kind of a bummer. I would love to have seen this ability as something repeatable in some way. As far as archetypes go, it really shines in Flicker, Control, and in White Weenie. It's really good against the Fatty Cheat, Super Ramp, and Voltron archetypes. And it's not really good against Tokens, Aggro, or Burn because you can only really target one creature. Number 4 on this list is Vindictive Lich. It's 3 and a black for a 4-1 zombie wizard, and whenever it dies, you can choose one or more of the available options. Each mode must target a different player, which is basically centered around the 4-player ID and commander. Target opponent sacrifices a creature, target opponent discards 2 cards, or target opponent loses 5 life. So the ability to choose a different mode for different situations is the kind of flexibility I really like to see in a card. This card is also more likely to connect and not be blocked for fear of what might be chosen against the player if you block it. And it also doesn't really matter how it dies. It doesn't have to be through combat. You can destroy it or sacrifice it yourself to get its ability. As far as downsides go, the toughness is pretty brutal. So basically this dies to a single ping from anything, which basically means that it was meant to die. No staying power is not always what you want, especially if you're behind in the game. This goes well into Disruptive Aggro, Zombie Tribal, Reanimator, and some uh, combo decks as far as the archetypes. It's also really good against Super Ramp, Fatty Cheat, Suicide Black archetypes, and basically against any hexproof creatures. It's not good against Burn, Aggro, or Control archetypes. Okay, number three on our list is Fractured Identity. It is three, a white, and a blue for a sorcery. Exile target non-land permanent. Each player, other than its controller, creates a token that's a copy of it. The fact that I can exile any non-land permanent in blue and white is one of the things that makes this card great. White usually targets only creatures, and blue usually bounces instead of exiles. And the fact that I get whatever you lose is stunning. As far as downsides go, the casting cost is a little high for targeted removal, and also non-land permanent. Why won't you let me touch lands? I don't understand, wizards. Why do you keep doing that? Let me touch the lands. White has Armageddon and other land destruction. As far as archetypes go, this goes really well in control archetypes. It's really good against Voltron, Combo, Fatty Cheat, and Super Ramp archetypes. It's not so great against Burn Aggro or Token archetypes. Number two on this list is Curse of Opulence. It is a one red for an enchantment or a curse, and basically it's an enchant player. Whenever enchanted player is attacked, create a colorless artifact token named Gold, and it has Sacrifice this artifact, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Each opponent basically also gets to do this as well. 
I love this card. You get Mana Ramp in red up to first turn. That's amazing. The fact that you can put this card out first turn and get mana advantage every turn you attack is really great ability. And it's in a color that doesn't really lend itself to Mana Ramp. Also, the mana ability is through an artifact. This isn't a mana ability that is emptied from your pool. It is an artifact that can be used in different phases as well as different turns. You can stack your proverbial gold up for a big explosive play earlier in the game than red would normally allow. As far as downsides go, as far as the other curses that were printed in this set, you only get one trigger regardless of how many creatures you have attacking. It's honestly kind of a nitpicky point, but the Timmy in me would love to exploit this card so much more. This is really good in aggro and super ramp as a splash color. It's not so great against control because they'll see it coming a mile away. There's no surprise or sneak that's available to it. They'll just remove it. And finally, number one on our list is Miri Weatherlight Duelist. It is one, a green, and a white for a 3-2 Cat Warrior with First Strike. And whenever she attacks, each opponent can't block with more than one creature this combat. And as long as she is tapped, no more than one creature may attack you each combat. This card is great for completely turning a game in your favor. If you swarm your opponent, they can't really do much about it. And once you've attacked, the retaliation has been completely neutered due to her second ability. That, on top of the fact that her power and toughness are really great for her curve. And let's face it, those who have been in Magic for a long time love the fact that Miri is back in Magic lore. As far as cons go, her toughness is a little weak. I'd like to have seen a little bit more in that. Her first ability requires you to attack with her, meaning that she'll always be the first one blocked to free up their army for the next attack phase, which basically means she's just not going to last very long. She goes extremely well in control and token archetypes. She's really good against token archetypes as well, as well as aggro strategies. She's not so great against Super Ramp, Fatty Cheat, and Voltron because they really only plan to attack with one creature. And she's also not very good against Burn because they're just going to burn her away before you can really do anything with her. So those were the top five cards from Commander 2017. The new cards in this set were extremely underwhelming. I was very disappointed with this set, not only from a limited or cube standpoint, but as a commander player as well. I definitely take into consideration that these cards are geared for commander and not necessarily for cube. But that being said, I didn't feel like these cards were very good overall, regardless of their format. There were some other interesting cards that were printed, but I felt that they really didn't fit into the cube format that well. Also, it really speaks a lot about a set when the most hyped card that was spoiled was basically only because an old ability was used on the card itself. If you like this video, go ahead and click that like button. If you want to see more videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe. I'm making new videos all the time. My question of the day to you is, what is your favorite card from Commander 2017? Would you have been willing to put one of the new three color cards in your cube? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.